my mum came to the UK as a seamstress and um, she always made our clothes and we were known in Luton for being the best dressed kids in town. Everything we, we wore was made by my mum. On my father's deathbed he made me promise I wouldn't go into the clothing industry because he told me it was not an industry that was going to go forward in terms of being able to make serious money and probably that was the reason I went into it because I wanted to prove him wrong. My name is Carol Takahashi. Um, I've been in the industry, the fashion industry, for 30 years. My name is Gary Isaacs. I'm CEO of Must UK, which is a manufacturing company of mainly trousers. At the moment, the industry is in a t is in turmoil, and the number of suppliers are reducing rapidly. The young, up-and-coming designers and people who would have worked in the fashion industry are definitely looking elsewhere now. When I first started in the trade, a lot of the products, um, the garments were made in the UK. Now they're being made abroad and this is to reduce the cost. The fashion industry has changed dramatically over my lifetime in terms of at the beginning supplying retailers, it was all about the product and therefore the value of the product and nobody really cared where you made it. People are, that make my clothes um, they come from like walks off like India, China, um, Turkey as well. And part of my trips is going to see the factories in India. And that's really opened up my eyes to the industry. And when you go to those countries, you discover some horrific things you can imagine. Underpaid workers, you've got to correct that. Minimum wages not being paid, you have to correct that. Because in those days, 20 odd years ago, there wasn't air conditioning, it wasn't modern. Those female workers in my lifetime of going to Bangladesh have always been in danger. They don't have bank accounts and they don't have passports, they don't have driving licenses. And in many instances until the last 20 years, so older than 20, they don't have birth certificates. One particular fact that I went to, we had a sequined beaded top and the guy didn't know we were coming and we arrived with no notice and for some reason he looked very shocked to see us and he said oh well the garments are over then he took me to another room and I said so where are the people that are sewn on the beads and he said they're, they're not here we source them out so I said to him what's that small room over there and when I opened up the door there was children sitting on the floor on cardboard boxes sewing on the beads so straight away we had to shut them down so we have joined four years ago something called the HER project because it means so much to us. And by the end of this year, because it takes that time in Bangladesh, all of our 23,000 workers, including the men, will have bank accounts that they can uh, be paid their salaries into and they will not have any stealing going on. A lot has changed over the 30 years from when I first started as a, a fresh student coming into the fashion world. The ethics and compliance nowadays in Bangladesh, you have to have a birth certificate. If you give birth, you're not allowed to get work without a birth certificate. 20 years ago, it was so different. And I think that really puts a good perspective on how the industry has moved forward very strongly.